Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to talk about how to find the volume of solids with known cross sections whose base is sitting on a graph. And I'm going to show you some pictures of this, and then I'll work an example that, that includes everything that we've done. But I want you to know something that we are not revolving anything. So the questions are going to look something like this. Find the volume of a solid whose base is sitting on x squared plus y squared equals 9 and whose cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis perpendicular to the x-axis are blank and that here this would either be circles or this would be squares or this would be um, equilateral triangles or this would be isosceles triangles it's going to be some known shape for you it could also be rectangles and maybe isosceles triangles. So I want to show you some pictures of this, but right now all we know is that the base is x squared plus y squared equals 9. So we know that, do a little circle here. So we know that like x squared plus y squared equals 9 is a circle of radius 3, but this is the base. The, the, shape is actually sitting on this graph. It's, it's there. We're not revolving or anything. and It's hard for me to explain this, so we're just going to go to wind plot and I'll show you what I mean. So here I've got the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 9, and we are going to do, get to my little selector here, we are going to do, well, let me close that, get back to wind plot, thank you. We are going to do sections and these sections I'll start with squares and we'll go from negative 3 to 3 and we'll look this solid and I'm going to show you the axes and then we're going to rotate it around so you see how the base is sitting on x squared plus y squared equals 9 and all of the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis there are squares and so you can see those cross sections and so you can find this volume with a formula, and I'll give you that formula in just a minute. Let's close this and look at some other ones. Let's look at semicircles. Semicircles, let's see the solid. So this would be if, oh, I also want to show you my axes. So this if the solids perpendicular to the x-axis were semicircles. That's what that solid would look like. And again, it's the base is that x squared plus y squared equals 9. That stays there. It's like a, I don't know, that's like a little dome or something. Let's take a look at some rectangles where the height is, um, we'll do half the width. And so here are rectangles, and you can tell that and those are cross sections perpendicular to the x axis. And let's take a look at, did we do equilateral triangles? I don't think we did. Let's do equilateral triangles. So here's equilateral triangles. So you have to find the volume of this solid that's just sitting there, and you happen to just know the shape of the cross-sections. So I'm going to go back and show you the formula, and then I'll show you an example of how to do this. So let's close all this and get back here. So when you see these equations, your formula is going to be volume equals the integral from a to b of a of x dx, where, let me extend this page, where a of x is the area of that one cross-section. So let's see if you know your area formulas. How do you find the area of a circle? Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So you have to find the radius. How do you find the area of a square? Well, you know how to find the area of a square. We're not going to write that down. But I will tell you, you might not know this one, the area of an equilateral triangle. Is side squared times the square root of 3 over 4. You might not know that one. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to show you an example here that is an AP question that incorporates all three concepts of area, volume, and cross sections. So, I've got A, B, and C here. We can see our region is defined above by the graph of y equals square root of x, and below it is defined by e to the negative 3x. And then on the right-hand side, we've got the vertical line, x equals 1. And on the left-hand side, we've got their intersection point. And I know a lot of you 
whenever you did this in class, when you found their intersection point, you graphed the two and calculated their intersection. Um, another thing that you can do is you can hit F2 and go to, which is your algebra, and you can go to solve, and it'll open up parentheses, and you type in the square root of x equals e to the negative 3x comma x, and close parentheses from the home screen, and that's going to tell you um, wherever they intersect, which I believe is only in one place. <clears throat> anyway, since that's very important, I'm going to go ahead and write down what that is. This is point two three eight seven three four, and I'm going to take that out as far as I want to, but definitely further than three decimal places, because that's not my answer. I'm just going to be using that. We'll only round at the end. So let's get after this question. I right, first of all I have to find the area of R, and this is fairly straightforward. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a sample cross section, and we're going to just find that distance, and we're going to integrate that. So let's take a look at that. Let's get, get a little cross section here. Okay, so there's my cross section. And all I need to do is I just need to find what that distance is. You know, what is this distance? And we talked in class, this is top minus bottom. So the top graph is square root of x, and the bottom graph is the e to the negative 3x. So this is going to be, for a, this is going to be my integral from the intersection point all the way out to 1. That's where we're going to let all of these cross sections range from. So we're starting at point two three eight seven three four and we're going all the way up to one and then we're going to have the top graph which is square root of x minus the bottom graph e to the negative three x dx so I'm gonna show this to my teacher and I'm gonna show this to the person grading my work this is what I'm putting in the calculator and then I'm going to type that in the calculator and this works out to be 0.442 or 0.443. It depends on how you rounded. But we definitely know to go three decimal places. Okay, let's go to part B. Part B is, what if we take that cross section and we spin it around an axis? And in this case, our axis is going to be the horizontal line y equals 1. So we're spinning it around here. And so the first thing we need to notice is when we take this region and we rotate it around this axis is that I need to use the washer method because there's a gap here. And I need to identify what my outside radius and what my inside radius are going to be. So my outside radius is what is the distance from the axis of revolution to what my hand would be touching if I was holding this object. I'm not going, even going to attempt to draw this, what it would look like, but the e to the negative 3x part is, is is going to be the what what I would hold on to if I were to hold the shape. And what is going to be cutting out the hole is this square root graph. So this distance right here, this distance from my axis of revolution to what I would be holding, that's going to be my outside radius. And that's going to be call, I'm going to call that my capital R of X. And this distance is top minus bottom, so that will be 1 minus e to the negative 3x. That's how far it is from the line y equals 1 to e to the negative 3x, top minus bottom. My inner radius is going to be the distance from the axis of revolution to the graph that's carving out the hole. And that is going to be 1 minus the square root of x. Very important to to uh, identify those before you start this. Alright, so our washer method formula is volume equals pi times the integral from, again we're letting our cross sections range from 0.238734 all the way up to 1. Of outside radius squared and then minus, we're going to subtract off the whole inside radius squared and then I'm going to ask my calculator what that is and this works out to be 0.453 pi okay last part is imagine that this region is a base of a solid so this cross section up here is the base of a solid and for this solid 
each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is a rectangle whose height is five times the length of the base in the region R. So the base of the rectangle is this part that's lying in region R, and the height is five times that length that's coming up off the page. So let's take a look at that rectangle. Go down just a little further. This rectangle is taller than it is wide. And let's go back up to the picture and look at the length of the base. <clears throat> so what is the length of this base? Well, that's the same thing as in A. The length of this base is top minus bottom, or square root of x minus e to the negative 3x. And the height is 5 times that. So the area of this one cross section is length times width. So we get 5 times square root of x minus e to the negative 3x squared. That's what our area of our rectangle is. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to integrate that through the the x values 0.238734 all the way up to 1. And so here's my setup. Integral 0.238734 all the way up to 1 of the area of one cross section. I'm not spinning anything around any axis. It's just sitting there. So I don't need a pi or anything like that. Dx. And this works out to be 1.554. Okay, I hope this was helpful.